Just about every Pokemon is someone's favorite. Some are more popular among the competitive crowd, and some are more popular among the casual crowd. Little Timmy loves his Charizard and glue, after all. It's like Little Timmy from Ohio, you know, his favorite Pokemon is Charizard and his favorite food is glue. But what about the Pokemon people tend to dislike? Sure, some Pokemon are disliked for their designs, and plenty of people hate on the object Pokemon like Garbodor, but some Pokemon are hated for what's inside. Today, let's discuss the most hated competitive Pokemon. For this video, I'll be sticking to Pokemon that are disliked for their playstyle or traits that they have in VGC. So while many casual players may dislike Landorus T or Incineroar because they're ever present on a ton of teams, I won't be including them because these Pokemon are widely regarded as a healthy part of the metagame. But with that clarified, let's get into it. And be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Like, like leave a like right now. Like, let's do an experiment. If you guys all like this video, I'll, I'll, I'll just be really happy. You might be surprised by this, but tons of competitive players can't stand Armor Rouge. There's a number of reasons for this, not the least of which is that this thing's set of tools in best of one is kind of ridiculous. It's a pretty common joke among VGC players that indeed Armor Rouge players will never accept open team sheets in best of one because it's the only way they can win. And while this isn't entirely true, it is kind of a valid criticism. Armor Rouge has two modes it can run, and open team sheets are the only reliable way to identify which it's going to go with. There's the acceptable but still dislike variant, which runs Trick Room and Expanding Force next to DD to deal massive damage and control the speed of the board. And then there's the weakness policy weak armor sets that do the exact opposite by activating the boost themselves and getting an Ndidi on the same turn to deal more damage than you thought was legal in your country. Yeah, Iron Bundle isn't the most uncommon sight in doubles, and if it's got a decently fast partner next to it, there's not really a reason to assume it's going to flip turn on the armorish to activate weakness policy. The same goes for Terra Grass and fast U-turn Pokemon with it. The only reliable way to call out this play is to see the team sheet or risk calling it out only for Trick Room to go up as you try to KO the partner. On top of that, the best way to stop Stop this setup is with a fake out user, but since Psychic Terrain is always being threatened to block your priority moves, it's not really safe to do that hard callout either. Armorers is basically hated for its power and best of one close team sheets, but I totally agree with the haters on this one. Also, it gets ally switch, so open the team sheets. You goober. Okay, so I've talked about Smeargle a ton on this channel, but let's explain why only players who like kicking sandcastles at the beach love this Pokemon. Smeargle is both super predictable and a wild card at the same time. Most Smeargle will run the same moveset of Spore, Fake Out, Spiky Shield, and Follow Me with a Focus Sash to be the greatest support Pokemon of all time. But variations of this moveset can be a major headache. Some Smeargle can run Lovely Kiss to bypass grass types like Amoongus' Spore immunity and put it to sleep anyways, and some Smeargle will run Quick Guard to block your Fake Out. Some as of Generation 9 after the DLC drops will probably even run Revival Blessing to bring back a teammate after they faint. Yeah, wrap your head around that one. Point is, this thing is able to do literally everything except deal decent damage. And of course it can, it's able to use every move in the game after all. Well, every move except for one. Smeargle used to be able to use Dark Cry's signature move Dark Void, which was a dark type status move that would have an 80% chance to land and put both opponents Pokemon to sleep. This was a bad enough tool for it to have, with Smeargle instantly winning some games, but when combined with the ability Moody, which randomly raises one step by two stages and then decreased one step by one stage, Smeargle could randomly start outspeeding Pokemon, living hits it had no business living, and before generation 7, start dodging 100% accurate moves. This Pokemon was such a menace that it enabled a ton of teams, but undoubtedly most players simply wish that it wouldn't return. But it's already confirmed to in the DLC, so we can only watch the show play out from here. Shedinja is a Pokemon that a lot of people have respect for, yet dislike at the same time. This is because Shedinja is really only viable when restricted legends like Kyogre and Xerneas are legal, despite it being one of the weakest Pokemon ever. Shedinja only has 1 HP, but it's only able to be hit by moves it's weak to, so Rock, Fire, Ghost, Dark, and Flying type moves. When partnered with powerful restricted legends that can eliminate Pokemon like Incineroar and Eveltal, Shedinja is able to function as a win condition. Shedinja players just need to remove all of the options the opponent has for KOing Shedinja. But there is another of its gameplay. Shedinja has access to Ally Switch. Oh brother, this guy stinks! This is a priority move which will make Shedinja swap places with its partner Pokemon. Being immune to most moves in the game means that this move not only protects its partners, but effectively negates all damage in a lot of situations. And because all the moves that damage Shedinja will one-shot it, Shedinja can also run the Focus Sash to guarantee a second chance at life if the player slips up and it gets damaged. Most people consider Shedinja to be a fair and predictable strategy in VGC, but there's just nothing more frustrating than having all your moves get dodged by Ultra Instinct Kyogre. Here's a new one. There's a few new dudes on this list, actually. Power creep's becoming a problem. Anyways, Ting Lu is a new dark and ground type legendary Pokemon. As a member of the Treasures of Ruin, Ting Lu has a whole stat that it, well, 
Ruins. Vessel of Ruin causes all Pokemon, excluding Ting Lu, to have their special attack stat lowered to 75%. This effectively makes every special attacker hit like they were a mixed attacker. A good descriptor of this would actually be that everyone on the field kind of gains an Assault Vest. This ability makes Ting Lu very difficult to knock out on the special side of its bulk, and its impressive 155 HP and 125 defense means it's also very difficult to KO on the physical side of things. Ting Lu is one of the bulkiest Pokemon ever made. With these defenses, Ting Lu is able to toss out the Oko move Fissure pretty carefree. While it's no longer the most used move on Ting Lu, it's still something you have to prep for. Anyways, it's able to fish for one-hit KOs because that final move slot is kinda just free most of the time. Ting Lu's typical moves consist of Ruination, Heavy Slam, and most importantly, Stomping Tantrum. Stomping Tantrum is a ground-type move with 75 base power that doubles if the user's previous move failed, and this includes misses. So I like to refer to Ting Lu as the now or later Pokemon, because it can land the Fissure and KO you now, or miss and KO you later with 150 base power stomping tantrum. Yeah, this dude had the whole community shaking in its boots after it casually destroyed the first Regulation C tournament with multiple in top cut. Ting Lu's reputation is still kind of ruined from that. Urshifu is yet another legendary Pokemon that many people dislike in the competitive community. Introduced into Pokemon Sword and Shield alongside the Dynamax mechanic, Urshifu was granted two forms, each with their own signature moves and an ability that really should have been reworked. Urshifu takes your defensive plays and just snaps it over its knee. Both Urshifu Rapid Strikes and Single Strike signature moves are guaranteed to crit. This means that the multi-hitting Water-type move Surging Strikes and the powerful Dark-type move Wicked Blow will both effectively hit for 112 base power and ignore all stat changes with which would reduce the damage that they deal. If that wasn't enough, what truly breaks this Pokemon and makes it among the most despised in the current competitive scene is its ability Unseen Fist. This ability simply makes it so that Urshifu's contact moves will always hit through Protect for full damage. In singles, that's not really a big deal, but in doubles, where Protect is ran on multiple Pokemon on nearly every single team and is a pivotal tool to gain the positioning you need to win, yeah, this ability's pretty broken. And this was bad enough in Dynamax formats where Max Guard could technically block the hit, but in non-Max, Urshifu was consistently the top two most used in the game. Had its ability been reworked to deal partial damage through Protect, it'd be far more manageable, but Urshifu literally just says no to all defensive plays and stays winning. Here's hoping that they rework it in Generation 10. Iron Bundle, despite being one of the best Pokemon in VGC 2023, is actually actively disliked by a lot of players, including the ones who use it on their own team. This is because Iron Bundle is both one of the most high value Pokemon in the game and one of the most inconsistent in the game. With 136 base speed boosted by 50% via its ability Quark Drive and access to Icy Wind, it's one of the best speed control options that we have. However, Iron Bundle finds itself being such a pivotal piece of its typically feral team that if Icy Wind misses the wrong Pokemon, it can lead to a domino effect that loses its player the match. And Icy Wind isn't even half the story. Being an ice and water type with low special defense means that it's constantly being threatened by powerful fire types like Chi Yu. Iron Bundle's best water type move to hit these Pokemon in doubles is Hydro Pump, which is only 80% accurate. This means that in life or death situations, Iron Bundle can not only fail to save its partners, but it can fail to save itself. Iron Bundle is really just too volatile of a Pokemon for players to use and feel safe about it. But there weren't many better options for most of EGC 2023, which had a region-locked Pokedex. This hit or miss life or death playstyle that it had made it hated by both its users, who couldn't afford to miss a crucial attack, and its opponents who were always holding out hope that it maybe might miss that icy win that you need to win the game. Zacian's attack stat was too high and it got higher when you switched it in. They also gave it the best typing in the game and a move that did double damage to Dynamax Pokemon without Zacian being able to Dynamax, so it was basically like a second one of those. They nerfed it, but I don't know, it might still be broken in Generation 9, we'll see. I'm not even going to explain this one to you guys, I'm just going to show you the numbers. What the dog doing? Crazy, right? What can I say about Regieleki that hasn't already been said? A lot actually, there aren't a lot of VGC video SAS out there. Okay, basically Regieleki is the fastest Pokemon ever, hands down, no questions asked. They gave this thing a base speed stat of 200, meaning that it didn't even need to invest a lot into its speed or run a speed boosting nature to outspeed the next fastest relevant Pokemon, which was Zacian. Except it did have to run max speed, but why? Well, because of its greatest rival. Regieleki. Yeah, the existence of other Regieleki running Electroid for speed control is basically the only reason Regieleki had to invest so much into its speed stat, because that turn 1 Electroweb speed tie could determine the whole game sometimes. A simple coin flip could lose you $2,000 at a regional. RNG in Pokemon, can you imagine that? So while Regieleki was always trying to outperform itself, it also found itself being one of the most busted attackers in the game. This is because of its ability Transistor, which would give its attacking stat a 50% boost in power if it used an electric move. This 
This means that Regieleki, instead of hitting like a measly base 100 base special attack Pokemon like it was, it would actually hit as hard as a base 175 special attacker. Do you know what Pokemon has base 175 special attack? None of them. The closest is poor Zerkatry with base 173, and they still haven't recovered since fumbling the 2017 World Championships. Yeah, Regieleki could hit that hard without an item, so ended up filling the role of a Dynamax user as well because it could one-shot the likes of Zacian with Life Orb Max Lightning. This Pokemon was so ridiculous that it made the Pokemon Company start balancing the game with equity in mind. Regidrago and Regieleki were introduced with very similar abilities at the same time, just Regidrago's was meant for Dragon Moves instead. Normally in this situation, they just nerfed both of them, but no, in Generation 9, Regieleki's ability was nerfed to be only a 1.3 times multiplier, while Regidrago remained at 1.5 times. Regieleki will certainly be remembered as one of the craziest new Pokemon ever introduced to the game. Okay, let's wrap up with a duo rather than an individual Pokemon. Although, if I had to put the blame on either one of them, it'd certainly be Annihilate. Mousape are a duo of Pokemon that rely on 50-50s. Annihilate is a bulky ghost fighting type with access to Bulk Up, Drain Punch, and its signature move, Rage Fist, which starts at 50 base power and gains 50 more every time Annihilate is damaged by an attack. Mousehold is a fast normal type with the ability Friend Guard that decreases the damage taken by partner Pokemon to 75%. It also has access to Follow Me to redirect attacks, and the move Beat Up to attack its partner Annihilate four times with a weak attack. If you pull this off, which it's really easy to do by the way, an Eyelip will end up with a 250 base power ghost move that can Oko basically everything. Don't bother trying to intimidate an Eyelip though, because its ability Defiant will just increase its attack stat by two stages after you drop it by one, so a net gain there. There's many ways around this strategy, but very rarely will they always be the correct answer. You can target the mouse hold, but if you don't double up on it, it usually won't KO and it could even just protect on that attack. You can also target the Annihilate, but Mousehold could just redirect it and allow the Annihilate to set up a bulk up on you. You can also just use a spread fairy move like Specs Dazzling Gleam from Fluttermane, but Annihilate can always just tear a water or tear a steel to soak up the hit and then smack you with a boosted Rage Fist. It's a really solid duo that many players dread facing in tournaments since it can be a tricky matchup for a lot of teams. Also, shout out to Paul Ruiz for taking Mouseape so deep into European International Championships when I had predicted that the duo would just drop off the face of the earth at that point. Mouseape is just such a strong low commitment mode that a team can run as a secondary option. There's a lot of games where you can threaten it on lead and win because your opponent expected it, but you just ended up leading off with something completely different. Yeah, there's not much more to say about it. Long live the monkey. Okay. But those are the Pokemon that competitive players hate the most for varying reasons. Let me know which Pokemon you don't like facing in VGC and let me know your thoughts in the video in the comment section down below. But before you go, be sure to also subscribe to my new channel Moxie Boosted's Gym where I'll be uploading my usual battle content. I've decided that this edited format is the direction my channel is going to be going from now on, along with a really high effort edited battle video every Monday. But if you want to see me use your teams and just practice online, head over to that channel for that kind of content. It's support from viewers like you that keep my channel going, so if you want bonus content and to see your name at the end of my videos for as little as $1 a month, be sure to check out my Patreon page. All these wonderful people on screen already have. If you can't afford to support, just know that a like and subscribing to the channel is more than enough. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.